Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is my Radeon R9 380. Despite its age, it's still somewhat capable in 2022, even after AMD discontinued driver support for it in mid-2021. Adrenaline 21.5.2 is the latest and last revision of the Radeon software that this and all GCM-based cards support. By no means does this render the car totally obsolete. Over the past couple of days, it's still managed to run everything I've thrown at it, and thanks to its DX12 support, I didn't encounter any API-related errors that prevented games from starting altogether. The titles I tested today are all very recent releases, apart from Cyberpunk, but that did receive a hefty overhaul patch earlier in the year. With the latest and last 21.5.2 drivers, the 380 is doing just fine. The MSI version does have 4 gigs of VRAM, which probably helps quite a bit too. Sticking to low or medium graphical presets is certainly wise, and the only real issue I ran in today was the terrible frame rate produced in Halo Infinite. It was here I started to look into potential fixes, and I soon came across videos from Tech Yes City and Budget Builds Official regarding modded or third party drivers. This led me to a forum on Guru3D regarding the drivers themselves, and after downloading and installing the custom 22.2.2 drivers for GCN cards, my R9 380 was now running 22.2.2 software, and although it was detected as an R9 380X, nothing had been changed in terms of frequency or other specs. AMD Relift software and Capture all worked as normal too. I'll leave a link down below so you can read all about the various releases and try them out if you want to. What I want to do now though is see if and how the performance of my aging R9 380 is altered. Can these custom drivers breathe a little more life into the card? Realistically, when I update driver software, I don't really expect it to change that much. There can sometimes be titles that do benefit from newer software, but nine times out of 10, a new driver release won't totally overhaul a game's performance. That said, any boost in frame rate is very welcome, so let's do some comparisons. I've compared the performance of the last official AMD driver to the these Ammonime Zone custom drivers. Please forgive the pronunciation if that's incorrect. Cyberpunk 2077 is up first. I ran a handful of benchmark runs using the new in-game tool and everything the game seemed to do was a little better with the Nimes custom drivers installed. There's nothing to write home about with regards to Elden Ring's performance. The game runs well with either driver installed, 40 FPS on average feels fine to play at here with the medium settings. Turning things down to low would guarantee you a higher frame rate, but you still won't get 60 FPS either way, so I thought it was best to opt for a nice combination between graphical fidelity and performance. With the Far Cry 6 benchmark run, I noticed a slightly higher average with the custom drivers, though the 1% low remained the same. That said, the 0.1% figure was a tiny bit better. Nothing really that would be noticeable when playing, but again, this was a constant increase across the five benchmark runs with both software versions installed. The R9 380 is still pretty solid either way though, it's really holding its own in 2022. Forza Horizon 5 with the R9 ran with almost 70 FPS on average either way. The custom drivers don't benefit performance with this card at all, but I have heard that they could mean the difference between playable and unplayable with even older GPUs. Now I can't speak much on that as I only have this card to test, but the average 1 and 0.1% figures were incredibly similar and stayed this way across the in-game benchmark test. Again, lowering the settings would produce a higher average, but I wouldn't sacrifice the extra visual quality personally, as we're getting at least 60 FPS anyway. Finally, it's Halo Infinite. This is where the third party drivers make the most difference. The game literally goes from unplayable to playable. Gone is the often sub 20 FPS experience. It's still not ideal from a competitive standpoint, but it is a massive improvement, and I could certainly play Halo like this now. Not only is the average figure better, but there's less stutter, not as many frame dips, and to be honest, if you're a big Halo fan who's still using an older AMD GPU, the Nimes drivers could very much help you out here. As with all third party software, I'm not going to tell you that you need to download this or anything like that. I'm simply documenting my experience with these drivers from an informative and educational standpoint. The forum posts are worth reading carefully to make sure you understand everything before you do or don't download anything. As I mentioned, there will be a link below to Guru3D. 
Thank you very much for watching then. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.